Hi guys, so um, I know, weird place, weird lighting, weird angles, um, I apologize for that, um, I'm still trying to work out lighting and places to film and all that fun stuff, but uh, today's video is about the color wheel, now I got a lot of um, suggestions to do like videos for like, the camera's too loud. <laughs> I got a lot of suggestions to uh, do a video about um, just like uh, makeup for different types of skin tones and different eye colors and I figured the best way to get like an all-encompassing video is to do a video about the color wheel so I hope you guys enjoy it and uh, yeah I'll see you at the end of this video and don't forget to always love yourself because loving yourself at any size is pretty dope. <laughs> Bye guys! Color wheel makeup explained. Um. If you are an artist, you probably already know what the color wheel is, but you may not, even if you are an artist or you're just a plain old person and you don't know what the color wheel is, this is really explaining it and how it's a great tool to use in makeup. A lot of makeup artists know about this and use this and it's just a great tool to know about in general. So you can really look at it and look and see what colors go together, what looks you can do, what kind of looks are going to go with your eyes, and it's just great. Now, I'm sorry if this looks a little high school project-y. Um, this was just the best way I knew how to explain this without confusing the hell out of you guys. Uh, so let's jump right into this, shall we? Let's go. Let's do this. All right. Now, um, terms to remember. I'm going to go through several terms while I'm talking about this color wheel. This is the basic color wheel right here that I'm showing you. I'm going to do several terms and you're going to want to remember them. You know what? Take some notes. Take some notes. Why don't you? This, this, this would be a good time to do that because really this, there's a lot to this. There's a lot. Hopefully I won't confuse you all in this process. So the first term you're going to want to remember is primary colors. Now these primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Now the primary colors are the colors that make up all the colors in the spectrum. So all the rest of the colors that you see on that wheel come from red, blue, and yellow. All right. Bye bye arrows. Okay. Now the next term that you're going to want to remember is secondary colors. Secondary colors are what you get when you mix those beautiful primary colors together. So to get violet, you would mix why would you mix to get violet? You would mix red and blue to get violet. To get orange, you would mix yellow and red. And to get blue, what colors do you think you would mix? You would mix, you would, you would mix, uh, what would you mix? Yellow and blue. That's what you would mix to get green. Yeah. So, like I said, those are the colors you get when you mix the primary colors together. And... Yeah, that's a good term to know, so remember that. Are you writing this down? I hope you are. Uh, the next term you're going to want to remember. I talk really fast, you guys. I'm sorry. The next term you're going to want to remember is tetrary colors. Now, tetrary colors are the colors that are on each side of each secondary color. So those secondary colors I showed you, you see there's two colors right beside those. Those are tetrary colors. For example, look at the color violet. Its tetrary colors are red violet and blue violet. So, again, good term you're going to want to remember. And I'm sorry if you hear the shuffling of paper. I have all this written down so I don't get all jumbly. Now, you see this color wheel? You see all those colors on that color wheel? This is, again, a very basic, simple color wheel. And all the colors you see on that color wheel of the truest form of each color. Now the truest form of each color is called a hue. So that red you see right there, that is the truest form of red right there. That is as red as it gets, it's right smack dab in the middle. Now hue is a term you're gonna remember. What do I remember? <laughs> hue is a term you're gonna wanna remember. Um, because of what I'm going to talk about next. So we're going to step away from this color wheel for a second and uh, we're going to talk about tints, shades, and tones. Dun, dun, dun. Actually, it's not really that complicated. Um, tints, which is that first row right there that you see, is what you get when you add white to a hue. So take that nice, that's supposed to be red. We're going to pretend that's red. Take that red color there, for example. Uh, the more white you add to that, 
and it's going to get more pink and more pink and more pink and each pink is a tint of the truest color of red are you with me are we on the same page all right let's go the next row is shade yay shade shade is made by adding black to each hue so the more black you add the richer and deeper the color is going to get and the more deeper the color is that's a different shade of that truest form of red we still on the same page are we still good i hope so because we're moving on to the next which is tone now tone is what you get which is that very last row tone is what you get when you add gray to each hue so when you add gray as opposed to when you add white it makes it more pastel when you add black it makes it more rich when you add gray it makes it much more muted so you know those taupey colors that you get sometimes with with certain things yeah those are those are tones of the colors so we still on the same page tints shades tones you're writing down i hope so let's keep going now i think yep we're going back to the color wheel mm -hmm. okay complementary colors now complementary colors are colors that are on opposite ends of the color wheel and when they are paired together they are much more vibrant and pop so for example blue and orange those are complementary colors as well as violet and yellow now again like i said when these colors are paired together they become more vibrant so this would be a nice tip for people with blue eyes because if you pair some like orangey coppery colors on your eyelid those blue eyes are gonna pop they're gonna be bam or if you have like green or hazel eyes reds would work really well on your eyes like those cherry rich i don't know how else to describe red colors except for like cherry cranberry would be another maybe a little bit more berry colors that are on like the red berry side those would be really great on hazel eyes because they were or green eyes green or hazel eyes because those are what's going to make those pop now if you have brown eyes you're like me and you're really lucky because you can put anything on your eyes and your eyes are just going to be like wow brown exciting <laughs> um but if you're really looking for a color that's going to make your eyes your brown eyes pop a little bit more i would do like blues or purples just because personally i found for my brown eyes it makes my eyes pop and i think that's the reason because um browns are more in that orangey ready type situation so it's gonna be a little bit um complimentary i guess so personally i found that blues and violets work best on brown eyes but again, do what you want. I mean, there's no rules in makeup. And that's important to remember when you're working with the color wheel is that you can pair whatever colors you want as long as you have the right technique and you're doing it right or you're doing whatever you want to do with them. It's going to look great. It's going to look awesome on you. So don't take this as like a diehard rule. This is just something to keep in mind if, you, if you're having trouble composing a look. So what's next, Emily? Analogous colors is what's next. Yay! Analogous colors are found right next to each other on the color wheel. So as you can see, that little bracket's popping up right there. And uh, these are generally um, in the same family. So you could probably shorten that bracket or move that bracket around a little bit, and you're pretty much going to get the same effect. The, the colors are going to blend nicely together. They're going to work nicely together. And yeah, it's just analogous colors are just, if you don't know what colors to pair, at all like you're just having like this mental block and you don't know what you're doing that analog is colors just take that bracket move it around the color well that's really going to help you out um now a tip that's going to help you also eyeshadow palettes tip typically use analog is colors to uh to bring together eyeshadow palettes because those are the colors that are going to work well with each other now this is not always the case sometimes you know uh Sometimes you get something like the electric palette where the colors are just all over the place and they're beautiful colors and they're bright and they're amazing, but they're not necessarily colors that are paired to work well together. They're just kind of like a palette of pigments as to where something like maybe like the naked palette, those are colors that are going to work really well together. Um, just in general, eyeshadow palettes tend to pair colors that are going to work well together so you can create an eye look with that one palette. So that's important to remember. I burped, I'm sorry. Okay, next we're going to talk about something that more relates to skin tone, and you're going to see why it is in a little bit. Now, there are two types of colors on the color wheel itself. There are warm colors, and there are cool colors. 
Now, cool colors are colors with red, blue, or purple undertones, and they're more soothing and they're more receding. Now, this is not true in all cases, but it's true most of the time. Like, you hear when someone's doing a speech or someone's talking in front of people or someone wants to exude a calming energy they want to wear blue like men want to wear a blue tie or women want to wear a blue top or blue dress or a blue necklace or blue eyeshadow <laughs> um yeah that's why because it's it seems it's more of a has more of a soothing effect and it recedes more now this is, again not in all cases sometimes you get that bright ass blue poppy eyeshadow that just makes whoo it's just intense it's just crazy my phone just went off. It's just crazy. But, um, Merit just followed me on Twitter. Hi, Merit. How you doing, girl? Anyways. Uh, yeah, so that's not the same in all cases, but generally warm col cool colors tend to be more receding. Now, warm colors are colors with red or yellow undertones. Now, those colors tend to tend to pop forward and draw more attention. Again, not in all cases, obviously, but for the most part, they tend to be more out there, more shoot. People tend to notice warm colors more, if that makes sense. Again, not in all cases. Sometimes warm colors can be really soft and really fleh. But, you know, this is just in general. In general, girl, in general. Now, how does this relate to skin tone? Well, you got two ends of the spectrum, which is the cool and warm. Just like I said before, cool tones tend to have more like pink and red and blue undertones. So pinks are going to look more pink on your skin tone. Blues are going to look more blue on your skin tone. So that's important to remember. Whereas if you have a warmer skin tone, warmer shades are going to pop more because you have that yellow golden tinge to your skin. That beautiful yellow golden tinge that I hate you for because, oh, it's so... Warm skin tones are beautiful so so are cool skin tones so are cool skin tones but you know what i mean you know what i'm saying just you see someone with a warm skin tone you're like ah if you see someone with a cool skin tone you're like ooh, i like that ah you know what i mean um however if you do have a warmer skin tone those blues and those pink shades aren't additionally gonna pop on your skin because that yellow tone is gonna mute out what makes those colors bright if you understand if that makes any sense so you're going to want to do a base or just layer either you're going to want to keep layering and layering product on until finally something pops or you're going to want to use a base that's going to kind of neutralize the 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 yellow <laughs> in your face and um really make those shadows pop so like for example uh nyx white base or NYX uh, Jumbo Pencil and Milk, or Max Painterly Paint Pot are going to work really well. Now, there's a third category here that you're going to want to remember, and that's neutral. Now, if you're someone who's in that neutral category, pretty much everything's going to work. Just like with brown eyes, where everything works on brown eyes, everything works on neutral skin tone. Really, everything works on everybody. This is just something to keep in mind. But... Again, those the neutral, you're not really going to have an issue if you're try if you're actively trying to make colors work. You're really not going to have an issue. Um, now, all the skin tones tend to fit in this neutral category because all the skin tones are a combination of cool and warm undertones. Now, some people put it in a whole other category of its own, but for simplicity's sake and for the fact that it is a mixture of cool and warm tones, we're just going to keep it in that neutral category. So... There you go. On to the next one. Now, a good way to know your skin type, your undertones, is the quote-unquote vein test. Now, I'm not talking about cutting yourself open and uh, trying to look inside. It's not. We're not about that life. Um, this is just looking traditionally at your wrist where it's traditionally going to be the best to see your veins. I'm looking at mine right now actually or maybe like that that the fold in your arm maybe I actually can't really see my veins in there but some people can they're not you know chunky monkeys like I am but the wrist is the traditional best place to look and what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at the color of your veins now people with cool undertones such as I are gonna have blue or purple veins 
people with neutral undertones are going to have those bluey greeny veins which means they don't really have any specific undertone to their skin so their their veins are going to be more like a blue green color now people with warm undertones are going to have those true green or olive veins because they have those peachy tinges to their skin so and there's that and uh, that's the end of this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys learned something today i hope you guys understood what the heck I was saying and uh don't forget to like comment and subscribe because you guys love me okay all right uh catch you guys later bye